Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of non Secretary Nerds. Tonight we're going to need you to charge your power rings and watch out for kryptonite because we're talking DC Comics. Uh, I'm Tim, as always. Joining me is my buddy Ian. How's it going tonight? Hello. Uh, things are going fairly well. Uh, hope the uh, week has treated you well. Uh, unlike me, part. it has thoroughly, thoroughly thrashed my ass. So <laughs> It was um, a long one though, I'll say that. Yeah, it, it was a it was a long week, but uh, you know, a lot of lot of stuff going on. You know, a lot of good things. Uh, I don't really know about any bad things necessarily. Just busy. Uh, yeah. Welcome to being an adult. Exactly. Busy is is the uh, word of the week. I I hear that hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Uh, yes. Anyway, folks. So tonight we are talking DC Comics, DC Universe, which uh, I will fully admit that I believe I have said this on the show before. I am not a huge fanboy that's more of him over there and it's probably really you know a couple of continuities and and specific you know universes and things like that yeah. aka the, the the power ring tagline <laughs> uh you know it, 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 so uh but we're gonna give it a go uh we're gonna talk um dc and i may be googling things in the background while we <laughs> chat but uh you know in reality, my exposure to DC has obviously been mostly through the mainline continuity players, you know, obvi you know, the the big name ones, uh, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Booster Gold. Oh, um, Booster all Gold. Of the well, how have they not gotten <laughs> Nathan Fillion to play him live action yet? Just saying. DC, <laughs> get on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that that yeah, yeah that needs to happen because he, he, it's a character that's that's basically made for Nathan Fillion, just like Deadpool really... was made for Ryan Reynolds. Yep, yep. Um, not literally, but uh, I mean, if you want like made for characters, uh, you know, uh, Nick Fury is made for Sam Jackson. It's it's literally, literally was. made for Sam Jackson. <laughs> literally was designed after Sam Jackson. Yep, so. yep. <laughs> um. Yeah, so my exposure to the to DC is mostly through those those mainline comic book characters. I do know some of the you know the more obscure side characters, mm -hmm. um, but you know a lot of it's from like the early ninety like nineties cartoons. Yeah. You know, Super Batman the animated series, which is still one of the greatest yes. cartoon series that has yes. ever been created. Um, Superman, uh, Justice League, yeah. um, Justice League, you know, was Justice so League good. Unlimited. Yep. Uh, all, you know all of those, all of those shows that were kind of designed and 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 created and looked very similar to each other. Yeah. Because uh, they all kind of had an interwoven continuity. I mean, they had Batman and uh, Batman and Superman adventures um, that combined kind of some of the shows. So uh, Which, again, a lot of like stuff that, that one didn't get as as much praise as the other one. The Batman and Superman didn't get as much praise as a lot of the other ones. Yeah, I think I think at that time they had kind of started run to run their course a little bit, and it, it everything kind of felt repeated, right? Because each character has kind of their own rogues gallery, and there wasn't yeah. much new that was going on. You know, yeah. Lex Luthor shows up with Kryptonite and tries to kill Superman. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, Metallo shows up with Kryptonite, tries to kill Superman. <laughs> I mean, I'm seeing uh, a theme here. Uh... Joker gets a hold of a chunk of kryptonite and tries to kill Batman and Superman. Uh, I'm going to stab Batman with it and throw him into Superman. Right, exactly. It actually kind of kind of interesting, like how much bloody kryptonite is on this plant is on Earth that people yeah, keep getting they, a hold of. Like they talk about how it's, it's obscenely rare and this, that, and the other. But like everybody's like, you can go down to the dollar store and get some kryptonite. It seems like. Yeah, pr pretty much. I mean, it's it's there. Yeah. It, I, I never really understood that again, because I mean, it, it's it's chunks of a pl of an irradiated it's irradiated chunks of a planet that yeah. blew up light years away, <laughs> and our entire our planet is some reason peppered with it. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um. Yeah. So you know, obviously, I think your favorite, uh, you know, storyline character it has to be green lantern right yes yeah like I, I have been a green lantern fan ever since i was a kid like i just like everything about it i like you know there are all these like cool aliens uh, like his power set was, was to me like really unique compared to like anything else that was out there um so i mean yeah, i just i am like immediately took to green lantern and just i've been a fan ever since power set I understand it. At the same time, I also I also feel like it could be a little bit hokey. This is like willpower. So long as I want it and I keep wanting it, I can do it. 
I mean, yeah. No, all right. Like, what? What if he's just having a bad day? Like, you know, you know, he didn't file those TPS reports or something at work, or <laughs> you know, he's just. Yeah, so it's kind of one of those like, well, all right, whatever. Well, I mean, um, you know, again, we talked about Superman, whose whose weakness is a green rock that just happens to be all over our planet. So, I mean, like, right. like, like with DC, okay, like Marvel characters, like in general, if you think of like a lot of the big names in Marvel, I mean, we're obviously going to go MCU here. Iron Man, what's his weakness? Alcohol. Okay, alcoholism is pretty severe. I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, Captain America. Swear like, words. <laughs> I hate you so much. I hate you so much. But no, like, like, like in general, if, if you look at, like, Marvel characters, they either, like, their weaknesses are something that would affect you or I, or they're completely invulnerable. There's not a whole lot of middle ground. Um, like, and even amongst the mutants, like, you know, Wolverine, pretty much damn near unkillable. Cyclops, okay, his weakness is, you know, getting shot with a bullet. I mean... But you look at DC, I mean, you know, Batman aside, because his weakness is, you know, a, an overdrawn bank account, um, like Superman, you know, his weakness is a, air quote here, rare radioactive substance from his planet. You look at, you know, Green Lantern, lack of willpower, or back in the days, the color yellow, or even farther back from that, would... Oh, no, a smiley face. I mean, yeah. He's well, going to be defeated by the smiley face well, like, guy. Like, so, so oh, many... The Walmart logo will destroy him. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, I, I do like the fact that in, the, like, the more modern Green Lantern comics, they did, like, kind of, not necessarily retcon, but they gave more purpose as to why beyond, oh, it's the color of fear. They do explain more in-depth why, you know, fear is so impo uh, so potent to them. But, um... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it just seems like DC has more, to me anyway more variety in how their characters work. I mean, obviously, you've got people like, you know, Shazam or Captain Marvel, as he was previously known. Um, I mean, a, you know, a magical character can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman, doesn't have that, you know, weakness to, you know, radioactive stuff. But if you get him to say his, you know, his name, or, the na or if you get him to say the word Shazam, he turns back into a little kid, you know? And that's, to me, DC just seems to be a lot more unique in how they treat their characters. They're, they're more in the... They stuck to how heroes used to be, which is you've got powers, you've got a weakness. You know, they're clearly defined. I mean, obviously, Superman back in the Golden Age, his powers were not so clearly defined. I mean, I think one of his most famous uh, old-school Golden Age powers was the ability to shoot tiny Supermen out of his hands that had all of his powers, which makes me think, can those tiny Supermen shoot tiny Supermen? And can those tiny Supermen also shoot tiny Supermen? Because at that point, you've you've just make like fifty of them and take a you know take a week off. Yeah, pretty much. You know. Yeah, I think um, y you make a good point, and I'm not deriding the you know the DC universe. Mm -hmm. I think e each each mainstream comic universe, with maybe the exception of Hellboy, uh, has their issues. Right. Um, yeah, but uh, <clears throat> you know, m my thought was always the difference being that you know DC superheroes always felt really. I don't know. For a while, they always felt really shallow. Like there was, it didn't feel like there was a lot to them. I mean, they right. had weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You know, Marvel was exploring things like alcoholism and loss and spousal abuse. Yeah. You know, Hank Pym. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, if any of you have seen What If, Hank is the reason that everything is bad. <laughs> right. You know, they were exploring these themes. Their their characters always felt more human to me, mm -hmm. in spite of being superheroes, because they were not always taken down by, you know, a, a chunk of space rock. They were taken down by themselves or just right. being a human being. So they felt a little bit more relatable to me. But yeah, anyway, yeah. we don't have to dwell on that. We, <laughs> we can, you know, jump back over to, to the, the DC universe. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, DC, obviously, you know, I have a, a thing for Batman because of the, you know, the, the spandex Batman, the animated series. Oh, know, that too. And spandex. <laughs> um, and, the and, you know, uh, Joel Schumacher's bat nipples. Um, <laughs> well, say, I mean, you know, like who doesn't love the old, you know, Adam West Batman. I mean, like find me somebody who you can sit down, put a good episode of that on and they don't enjoy it. And I'll find, you know, I'll show you a liar. 
I mean, this is very true. And they, they kind of knew what they were doing back then. Yeah. I mean, it was all very, it was all very over the top and tongue in cheek, you know, bow, pay, bam, whiz, yeah. bang, uh, bomb. Bat, bat shark repellent. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, bat everything. Uh, yeah. You know, the bat underwear, <laughs> uh, bat men's cologne, bat condoms. I mean, I'm sure that, uh, well, it was, because... it was the 60s, Ian. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Adam West and Burt Ward were just drowning in, if you go back, like, there's a good documentary, um, mm -hmm. kind of a documentary interview type thing with Burt Ward and, and Adam West a, uh, yeah. from a, several years ago, and they will tell you that they were just swimming in women. Yes, well, uh, there was, and this is, I was real young when I saw this, there was like a, I don't even remember, it was a documentary of some sort. But uh, I remember Burt Ward was saying that when he first got cast as Robin, everything was fine. They put him in a costume. And like two episodes in, they were getting complaints because you could clearly see his junk. And he's pretty well endowed. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, like I remember that. the bat pole was going with them. Um, but he said that like it was either he keeps his job or he had to take, you know, like medication to kind of give him some shrinkage, if you will. And like... I mean, kudos to Bert. He took the shrinkage pill. I'd have just sat in front of the air conditioner for 20 minutes before filming. But I mean, <laughs> jumped, jumped in a, jumped in a, ba a cold bathtub real quick, thrown the suit on, and then run. Exactly. All right, let's uh, go. Let's do this now. Go, go, go. <laughs> Action. Right. <laughs> we got 10 minutes. Make it count. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like yeah, Bert Ward and Adam West, like they were. I mean, they were superstars. I mean, for what it was, they were superstars. Everybody knew Batman and Robin back in the 60s. Even people that weren't fans of the comics enjoyed that campy show because it was just, it was so goofy and irreverent. But I think that's kind of what made it, you know, what it is. And, you know, it's a magical thing. Yep. And here's a fun fact for those of you listeners out there, and I'm sure, Tim, you probably know this one. Uh, the first two Batman movies, um, Tim Burton's Batman movies, uh, the gentleman that plays Commissioner Gordon in it actually played Commissioner Gordon in the original uh 1960s batman show See, that uh that i didn't know i mean i'm sure if i went back and looked at it i'd remember it but i didn't off the top of my head yeah i didn't think i know that yeah that uh, yeah the commissioner commissioner gordon is the same character it's kind of like one of i mean obviously the, the, it's been so long it was so long between those movies right. that you know it's uh it, or those those pieces of media that people more than likely forgot. I can't remember who told me one of my family members did like maybe my dad or something like that. Cause he would have, you know, kind of remembered right. that uh, show. Um, but uh, yeah, nowadays, <sighs> nowadays though, it kind of, I mean, we're obviously in the middle of the superhero, like mega boom. Like it's been going yeah. on since Iron Man. Yep. Um, and some people are fed up with it. Some people are tired of superhero movies. <laughs> like the director of Dune. <laughs> right. You've seen that, uh, right? I'm not. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I saw that. But yeah. Yeah. The, the director but, of a uh, remake is complaining that another company makes copy and paste movies. Yeah. And I heard his movie wasn't all, uh, I've heard the reviews for his movie. Are which, which is a shame because all the previews for Dune looked really good. Mm hmm. Yeah. But, anyway. um. Yeah, so we're in the middle of the, you know, this this superhero boom, like mega boom that's going on. It, 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 I wouldn't even call it a boom. It's like an extended bang. Like it's the big bang. It it just it, it just keeps going. Right. And it's gonna keep going. We've said this before. It's gonna keep going until they stop making money. Exactly. Which is when, when it's going to be a while. Yeah. Right. Which is going to be a while because if you look at it, like a lot of the golden age and silver age stuff. And like the content from these things that they're pulling from and stuff like that, it comes from an, an era when people like you and I were kids, you know, yep. the very end of the Gen X's, the beginning of the millennials, the Gen Y's, and even the, you know, even now some of the Gen Z's. Uh, and we're all people that have jobs, so we can pay for this stuff. Right. <laughs> we can, and, we can and, pay to go see these movies. We can pay for exactly. all the, the merchandising. Exactly. Uh, but you know, DC is um, their move. Their cinematic universe has not exactly been the greatest. It's, it's um, like they've got. Like, there are some individual films that are really good. There are other individual films that are just terrible. Like I, I, I finally recently watched Joker, which is it is a DC film, but it's not 
as of yet, not connected to anything else. It's its own standalone alternate universe thing. I actually enjoyed it. I mean, now, could they have Loved called it. could they have called the movie anything other than Joker, and would it have still worked? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Like it didn't. Apart from, you know, the whole subplot. You know, spoilers if you haven't seen the movie at this point. The whole subplot with the Waynes. They could have taken that out, and it still would have been on its own a a very enjoyable film. Um, I, I mean, mean, it didn't even have to be the Waynes. It would yeah. you could have done any you know insert insert you know mega corporation owner. Yeah, like they could they could have just made somebody up and had a tagline as oh yeah he's the richest man in the world you know and it's the movie still could have worked. It did a really good job of dealing with uh, with uh, mental illnesses and you know how it affects people. And, like, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the film. But, I mean, I wouldn't say that that's... Apart from the fact that it's called Joker and features the Waynes and Gotham and all that, I wouldn't really call that one a DC film, so I'll, I'll kind of... I'll shelve that one. Um, Aquaman. Aquaman, I... You know, if we're going to talk mainline DC movies, I thought Aquaman was fantastic. Jason Momoa is, is an absolute delight. Um, the movie is amazing. Willem Dafoe did a really good job in it. Um, hopefully we see him in another movie here in a couple months. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh then, then there's, there's some misses, uh, you know, speaking of misses, uh, Miss Diana Prince, uh, first Wonder Woman, absolutely phenomenal film. Loved it. Yep. Probably like it, it, Shazam and Aquaman are my go-tos for good DC live action movies. I think that's really all they have though. I mean. Like, for good DC well, live-action well, movies. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, because all the rest of them are their ensemble pieces, which, I mean, we'll get into or that. Or sequels. Yeah. Wonder Woman 84. I really, really wanted to like that movie. And I, Ian and I, I believe, have touched on this before. We watched it the day it came out on HBO Max. We got together in person, watched it together, and 20 minutes into it, it turned into Mystery Science Theater 3000. We just yes. we could not take the movie seriously. Nothing about it, to us anyway. Nothing about it captured the magic of the first one. Yep. I mean, it was. It honestly felt like they had a completely different team working on that movie, but, they, I mean, they didn't. It was the same director, same same leads. Everything about it should have been good. It just, I think one of the best parts about that movie was just Kristen Wiig as Cheetah. Yeah, I mean, because Chris villain. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like up like, until up I until the point where she turned, up until the point where she actually turned into like the cat creature, mm -hmm. I thought she was really enjoyable. Like her menacing and her character development yes. was was really good. What well, and, and then a they, lot of they, people, and then they, yeah, and then they turned her into a like a CGI cat thing, which the, the... it just didn't feel like it worked. And then you know, yeah. and then Wonder Woman became Goldar, but you know. <laughs> right. Well, and like the the CG for for Cheetah just it it seemed off. Like it mm -hmm. wasn't bad CG. It just it didn't look like it fit. If that makes any right. sense. But no, like Kristen Wiig. I know a lot of people were like, "Oh, you know, she's going to be playing a villain, really?" Her and I, yeah, same thing. She was probably my favorite part of that movie. Um, besides, uh, besides, you know, Pedro Pascal playing, you know, fallible father figure. See. I, I like Pedro. I really do. Um, and I, I realize that actors have to work with the script they're given. They have to work with the direction they're given. Yep. This was not his best role at all. No. I mean, by, and, any, and by I don't, any stretch. Yeah, and I don't think... Again, I, I, I'm going to lay the blame on the, on the writers and, and this, the direction of the movie. But yeah. anyway, we're not here to lampoon 84. We yeah. know, like... It we've said it before. It, it's it's pretty terrible. Uh, you know we're kind of jumping around uh, yeah. to a lot of different topics as well. But yeah, so Aquaman. I I've only seen three fourths of it because I was watching it at my parents' house with my brother, but I had to leave. Okay. Um. Uh. Haven't seen Shazam, Shazam yet. I know oh, that you're, I need you're to. missing. You're missing out. That I know. Is really I, good. I, I know. <laughs> uh, and obviously I've seen you know Wonder Woman, but you know Batman versus Superman was. Bad. I mean, th that was that was a big letdown for a lot of people because we had been wanting that so long. That well, live action I think, fight between them, and then when we got it, they, I think the they, moment... they took too much from too many different Batman versus Superman things and tried to put them all into one thing. And those things individually work, but not for me. For me, the moment 
that I knew the movie wasn't going to be good was when I heard they cast Jesse Eisenberg as Les- Lex Luthor. I went, all right, this is going to be a crap fest. Like, there's no way. He is not a menacing character whatsoever. Yeah. He can play a dick just fine because he played one in, what was it, the, the Facebook movie? I can't uh, remember what it's called. Social Network, I think it was called. Yeah, Social Network. You know, he, he does a fantastic job playing a jerk. Yeah. He's usually just like the, you know, awkward slapsticky funny guy you know fast talking funny guy type yep uh but he's not lex luther like if you want a truly menacing like lex luther you get someone like well clancy brown willem Um, defoe well willem defoe you know what Uh, like like i could see willem defoe playing luther and doing it really well actually mm mm-hmm like, that was just a throwaway joke, but now that I think about it, I think he could have pulled it off. I mean, he pulled yeah, off I mean, Osborne. True. Which is effectively uh, the I same mean, character with hair. <laughs> right. I mean, even Kevin Spacey did a better Lex Luthor than Jesse Eisenberg, which yeah. is saying something. Yeah. Because um, that movie was also crap. See, and I had such high hopes for that, because, I mean, they even got uh, Christopher Reeve's wife's blessing mm-hmm. for that movie, and then they just... Because, I mean, that one is a sequel to uh, Superman 4. Yep. But, yeah. I mean, Brandon Roth, I, th- I thought he did an amazing job as, as, you know, Superman, though. Yeah, I mean, he did a decent job. Yeah. Like, I, I'm... Yeah, but... I mean, we've... we've we had Batfleck, who I actually thought I, did a yes. decent job. See, he I, plays a good yes. Bruce Wayne uh, and Batman. I'm sad that he doesn't get more time as that character. Yeah. We are going transitioning soon to uh, Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne, uh, Batman, which I'm actually excited about because yeah. as much as people remember him for Twilight, <laughs> kill me <laughs> now, um, he's actually a really good actor. Yeah. He's he a really, really good is. actor. If you watch him in anything else, like he is a really good actor so yeah. i'm excited for that one now, but, see, like, like I, you know speaking of batman like as far as like live action batman go, like with the animated batman if you have a good voice actor you're you're set live action batman it seems like you get so many actors who are either a really good bruce wayne and a terrible batman or a really good batman and a terrible bruce wayne ben affleck to me he hit both parts like he played a good batman and a good bruce wayne which is, is hard to nail down. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say this. I thought, um, you know, Michael Keaton mm. in his run as Batman, you know, the original Tim Burton movies mm. did a good job as both Bruce Wayne and Batman. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, they were, they were a little bit campier movies, but yeah. they didn't lean too heavily into the campiness. Yes. Um, and that's why if, you know, they do like, um, you know, like I can't remember the exact storyline. Um, you know, where like a Batman Beyond type deal, mm. they need to get Michael Keaton to come back and play old, old Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, like everybody says that's what they need to do. Yep. Yeah, he needs to play old Bruce Wayne. And if they do like a multiverse thing, they need to have Kevin Conroy in there somewhere as well, who played the voice of Batman I, in the they, animated series. They did technically have him play live action Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Which. Everybody was pretty let down by, um, in the, uh, the, well, I don't, I'm not even necessarily Flash, but the CW live action shows, they did, you know, their version of, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, and Kevin Conroy finally got his time playing live action Bruce Wayne, and it wasn't as magical as all of us had it built up in our heads to be. <laughs> Which it's is sad. Very sad. Um. But. I mean, let's let's take solace, Tim, though, in the fact that no matter what, nothing will ever be as bad as the Green Lantern movie. Okay, great. we're going to talk about this now. I promised a while back that I would rant about Green Lantern. All right, hold on, everybody. We'll give you 10 seconds to you know, pause the video now, go make popcorn, get a drink. It's going to get intense. Uh, you know, you can see, if you, those of you watching on the video, you can see the vein pulsating across yeah. Tim's head. Like, I think I'm yeah. seeing a hemorrhage in his eye. Yeah, a little um, bit, a little bit. I'm getting the twitch. He's getting the twitch. All right, <sighs> all right. For those of you, uh, we'll wait a couple of seconds here. All right, welcome back. I hope you have your popcorn, and go. 
Okay, everything about this movie is bad. There's nothing redeemable about it. Ryan Reynolds did the best he could with what he was given. Parallax is not a giant cloud demon monster thing that used to be a Guardian. The Guardians are wrong. Everything about the Green Lantern Corps is wrong. Mark Strong was good in it as Sinestro. I will say that. That's the one saving point. We were teased with a, a, a potential Sinestro Yellow Corps sequel at the end. We're never going to get it. We're never going to get Michael Clark Duncan as Kilowog again. Everything about this movie is horrible! And with that, the CGI you know, suit was bad. <laughs> well, <sighs> everybody, Tim has now died. Um, <sighs> the rage has consumed him. Uh, yeah, no, that the that movie was just it was rough. I like, I I went into that movie like so excited about oh live action Green Lantern. This is gonna be awesome. And why don't theaters give refunds if the movies are bad? <laughs> this movie is why because they would go bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah. What's okay? Movie tie-in video games are usually terrible. The Green Lantern movie tie-in video game was better than the movie. What does that tell you? Well, do you remember the <sighs> Superman video game from the N N64? It, that was the nigh unplayable. That was better than the Green Lantern movie. <laughs> I mean, it was so bad that Ryan Reynolds <sighs> himself lampooned himself for playing the character yeah. in De at the end of Deadpool. <sighs> or Deadpool 2, sorry. I'm so angry. So, I'm so angry now. Yeah. But, you know, we we talked about some movies. Why don't we switch gears and talk about, you know, some of the comic books? There are some of the comic books arc that are, arcs that I that I know <sighs> that I enjoy. Um, obviously, again, being a Batman fan, I'm more of a follower of those. Uh, you know, one of my favorites is Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. Oh, yes, yes. Which is considered one of a, a quintessential reads as far as the DC, you know, DC mm. universe goes. Absolutely. You know, this, this comic basically follow, you know, it's, it's Batman in 30 years, you know, in 30 years in a, I don't want to say a dystopian future, but just kind of like a, a, a run down. Yeah, it's kind of like a run down future. Yeah. And he's he's so, you know, disillusioned by everything. Now he comes back and he starts really going much more renegade than he was before. Yeah. Um, but he's also like to preface this, he's also got, you know, 30, those extra 30 years. Is he had been retired? What was it like 10 years or something like that? Yeah, something yeah. like that. But he had, you know, his entire time as Batman, all those injuries, all you know, everything he went through, and now he's, you know, 30 years older than that, so, you know, you, you bust a hip when you're 20, you, you know, that might not affect you till you're 60. <laughs> you know, break your back. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Several times. Um, right. Uh, by yeah, all I mean, rights, was... he should be paralyzed for life, just saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, look at Rhodey. Like, he falls out of the sky once, and, you know, he's yeah. got to have mechanical legs. And, yeah. and Batman literally gets snapped in half, like, eight times, and he's perfectly fine. Um, like, there's some kind of, like, Lazarus Pit shit going on there. Um, well, uh, so he, he, he actually, at least in the mainline continuities, refuses to use it. I, think, I, I know. I, I think I'm... there is, like, there's... There might be one or two, because I, I don't remember all the times that... There are some comics where he does use the Lazarus Pit. And I don't remember... I know the majority of them are, like, Elseworlds or What Ifs type stories. Yeah. I do think that there was one mainline story where he used it. But I, I do, I'd have to look into that one. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. Yeah. But, I, but, mean, but, I mean, anyway, I get what you're saying. Yeah, Dark, you know, Dark Knight Returns is, is again one of those quintessential reads. It's such a fantastic story. You get to see, you get to see Batman and Superman duke it out. You know, if you haven't read it, I won't spoil. Uh, I'll actually avoid spoiling that. They, they uh, don't Brana, say they, they don't say Martha and make up. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the 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 story came out in 1986. By all rights, the statute of limitations has passed, but it is yeah. such a good story that I'm not going to ruin that for you. Yeah. Now, there's others that we're going to talk about that will probably, you know, bring a little bit of spoilerage. You yeah. know, kind of like Death in the Family, um, Killing Joke. Where Killing Joke. That's, uh, that that is a really good. That, that one's dark. As dark. It is but it's good. Right, it is incredibly dark. I mean, if you and then you look at the the animated movie that they did a few years ago of, of Killing Joke, um, now, see, which kind of went off 
kind of went off the the source material a little bit, like had some weirdness to it, but generally remained relatively, you know, relatively uh, connected to it. Um, saw the return of Mark Hamill and, and Kevin Conroy yeah. as their respective characters, uh, which was fantastic. Uh, you know, it, it was it was a good movie, and that's that's saying something because right now I feel like the DC animated universe, you can't swing a cat without hitting a movie. Yeah. Like they release one like every month, like Warner brothers media, you know, Warner brothers animation. They're like, these people are probably getting treated like, you know, Japanese anime animators right now. Like they're just chained to their desk and, and fed intravenously and said, you make, you make Batman cartoons. Well, I mean, uh, heck the, the injustice, uh, animated adaptations coming out here pretty soon, actually. Mm -hmm. I think in the next like month or two, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, th like that, that one I'm looking forward to because, like, we haven't even touched on the DC. Well, I mean, we did touch on some of the DC video games. But, like, Injustice, I mean, if you like Mortal Kombat, it, you know what you're getting into. It's made by the same studio. But, uh, I mean, it, it's another Superman Goes Bad storyline. But they, they do it in a, a, a good way. I, I think, anyway. So, I, I'm excited to see the, Inju uh, the Injustice animated film just to kind of see how well they translate that um yeah. i, I mean, think they the, did wind up doing comic tie-ins uh, you know comic did, yep. book tie-ins yep. and stuff so that you know they did they did flesh out that universe mm -hmm. or that particular continuity storyline more yeah they so did, i think yeah. they do have enough enough like material going off of that so long as they don't veer completely off track with right. that one which i don't know why they would i mean it's Again, already got been... a lot to work with <laughs> Right. Again, they've been relatively successful with their animated movies. Yeah. I just think there's too damn many of them. That's my problem. It's just because, again, I'm being like, just like people are like, oh, yeah, superhero movies, we're getting saturated with them. We get, you know, you get like four Marvel movies a year. Meanwhile, DC puts out one or two friggin' animated movies a month. <laughs> I mean, and it's just like, for a while, well, uh, well and, and like a lot of them do have like an overarching connected narrative to them. But the problem is there's there's so many of them that. Like, if you go, like, on, on HBO Max as an example, and like, oh, this one looks cool, you might not know where in that continuity it falls because the descriptions of them don't tell you, you know, sequel to blah, 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 or prequel to blah, blah, blah. Um, I mean, you, you can easily look it up, Google it, and figure out, okay, what order do they come out in? Um, I know uh, any of the DC animated movies with Constantine in them. Constantine is one of my... Actually, probably my favorite, like non main tier DC character, just because like the the whole idea behind him, yeah, like I I just I'm fascinated by everything about Constantine. Um, I mean like the the Keanu Reeves think... movie is technically Constantine. I mean yeah. again that that's one that uh, similar to uh, the Joker movie, it's its own standalone thing. And that one, they, they could have literally called him anything else and had Keanu play him, and it, you know, I still would have enjoyed it. But a lot right. of people are like, oh, Constantine, thinking of the DC character, watch that, and it is quite a bit different than the source material. Yeah, about the only thing that was really the same is he fights demons and wears a brown trench coat. He smokes a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, and smokes a lot. Right. Um, yeah, Constantine is one of those characters that is not as well known, mm -hmm. but he's really interesting. Yeah. But you said not mainline. I think he's becoming a lot more mainstream though. Because well, they've well, they've done several movies with him. Mm -hmm. Like they've featured him in, you know, some of the cartoon in, in some of the cartoon movies well, and well, whatnot. Matt Ryan's uh version of him in the live action uh, CW shows. Or is it Matt Ryan, is that his name? Not sure. I, I, I think, but anyway, the, the gentleman that plays him in the in the CW shows I think does a spot on job. He he nails not only like he nails the voice, he nails the acting, he nails everything about him. Um, it's a shame that we're not going to get him anymore. Um, but which, which yeah. I would have loved to have seen him in a live action Constantine, like give him his own film. But fun fact, I mean, Constantine in the newer DC animated things was voiced by that actor because they absolutely loved his voice. They're like, we, yep. we want you to you are him. <laughs> yep but uh so you know what's what are some of your favorite stories uh um and again we don't necessarily have to focus on one particular continuity yeah. i just chose batman because that's kind of the ones that i know the most right but... 
Uh, I mean, for me, and, and again, this goes back to being a, a Green Lantern fan, um, Black the Blackest Night storyline is, is one of my favorites, just because that really did, and, and all the stuff leading up to it, really did a, a phenomenal job of flushing out the Green Lantern mythos. I mean, uh, Jeff Johns, we were already, through him, we're already getting an expansion of, you know, the Green Lantern sphere of influence. But all the, the Blackest Night and all the stories leading up to it, and even coming out of it, really did a good job of, of expanding that universe, giving it more lore, um, and just world building, which I, I'm a fan of. Um, apart from that, Flashpoint is, is one of my favorites, just because it is interesting to see... A, like, Flash is also one of my favorite characters. Um, it is interesting to see how, with his ability to time travel, how even changing one little thing how they could completely take everything off the rails from there. I mean, you get a, a Superman that crashed in Metropolis instead of, you know, podunk nowhere and was a government test subject. You get uh, Bruce Wayne being shot and killed instead of his father and his father taking up the mantle of Batman who has no problem shooting bad guys. Um, I mean, Or his mother who winds up becoming the Joker. Yeah, which, which I thought that was a really interesting take. Um, I mean, Cyborg is a government agent, effectively. Um, like, you see all these... I, I love... Like, well, I mean, look at the look at the war between, you know, Atlantis and the Amazons. Mm-hmm. That was cool. Like, I, I love... And I think we kind of touched on this in our, our What If episode. Um, I love alternate timeline stuff in comics. Uh, whether mm-hmm. it's DC's Elseworld prints, or the What If comics from Marvel, or even stuff involving time travel, which can still be mainline but it's an alternate timeline. I love stuff like that because it's... While comic characters are fun, I mean, everybody knows Superman's origin story. Everybody knows who he is. You can only be told that story so many times before it gets stale. So why not throw in Superman crash landing in Soviet Russia and becoming a communist? Red Sun. I I I thought Red Red Sun was phenomenal. Um, You know, why not make Batman a vampire? You know? Uh, like I mean, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do with characters just by tweaking little things, and it seems like DC isn't shy from trying out just off the wall stuff with some of their characters. Which I, I mean, look I, at I what like they did. That. I mean, look at what they did. They, the new Fifty Two. They they decided they decided that the best thing for their for all of their pro, their IP was to literally reboot the entire yes. universe. Yeah, which is what they did back in 2011. And I believe they used Flashpoint, right, to yes. to do that. Well, so then, they used then it, it, they it, used Flashpoint and then rebooted the universe. Yep. Well, and then it was they had a soft reboot after that because New Fifty Two people, longtime fans, weren't that keen on it. So they were gaining new readers, but they were losing a lot of their classic readers. So they kind of tweaked it up a little bit, and it it further tied into uh, Watchmen is now a DC property. It effectively tied into Dr. Manhattan was the one literally reshaping the universe because he was bored. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's an, a very oversimplification of it, but that's how they did it. Um, so, I mean, the, the Watchmen, which Watchmen was a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, uh, graphic novel. Uh, movie was really good, too. Did change a few key things here and there, but, I mean, that's, that's to be expected in an adaptation like that. But, uh, you know, having somebody as, you know, literally omnipotent and godlike as Dr. Manhattan, you know, everybody says, oh, Superman's a god amongst men. When you have somebody who can literally shape reality and, you know, think you out of existence, it doesn't matter if you're Superman or not. You know, a villain like that, I mean, that's somebody who's, that's an OP villain right there. <laughs> the, the thing with, the thing that I always thought it is interesting with Dr. Manhattan, if we want to veer off courses a little bit, is yeah. remember that he started as a human being. So yeah. while he may be omnipotent now and omniscient, uh, he's still originated as a human and he yeah. still has, he's still fallible. Like he gets, like he gets bamboozled in the, in the, the Watchmen comics. Ozymandias yeah. outthinks him. Yeah. Which is saying um, somebody who can literally perceive all of time and existence simultaneously was outsmarted. What does that tell you about Ozzy? You know, right? Exactly. I mean, they say um, he's the smartest but, man on earth. I mean, <laughs> he's right. got the balls to prove it. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, Doctor Manhattan's also the smartest man on Mars, though. So. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's true. He is the smartest man on Mars. <laughs> 
Um, anyway, so yeah, I mean, it's not uncommon though. I think for for um, you know comic book companies to kind of do offshoots, multiverses, reboots type thing. I mean, Marvel did it with the Ultimates timeline. Yep. You know, they it was kind of wasn't really a reboot, but it was it was an alternate universe type type deal but they ran with like that became mainstream for them for a while yeah. they and could then try new popularity... things there without it yeah. affecting their established comics right and then once things started to flag a little bit for it then they just kind of wiped it out i mean quite literally wiped it out yeah. like there was like a doomsday thing yep. at, and like just gone like everybody died well, um, not not everybody, but <laughs> not everybody. Yep. Not everybody. The, the popular characters somehow managed to live. Well, they killed Wolverine, so. Well, uh, no, old, old man Logan is is back and in, in in canon now. Yeah, but I believe in that in in the original Ultimates universe, he drowned, like because well, yeah. he because he, he because, can't Mag- swim because I, I believe the the, I believe the Doomsday thing was. Magneto got ultra pissed off and just altered the Earth's magnetic field, which caused a global tsunami. Oh God! And I be- I believe he, yeah, he like wiped out most of the planet. <laughs> and I believe he caught in that at one point, and he just like his bones were still metal at that point, so yeah. it was like it's not he couldn't really float, and he just yeah to the bottom of the ocean. Yep. Uh, so well, anyway, well, I I think that they they. And I might be thinking of a different time that Wolverine drowned. They said that he was in a perpetual state of dying and being alive over and over and over because his regeneration was keeping him alive, but he was running out of oxygen. But then his regeneration would keep him alive, but then he'd run out of oxygen and, you know, back and forth. That drowning forever, that would be a horrible way to go. And you're not even oh, going. A... You're just stuck there. Right, exactly. <laughs> um but anyway, pivoting Dang, back yeah. over to back over to DC. Um, yeah, I mean, Flashpoint. I I completely understand. That was a that was a fantastic storyline for them. Again, don't know much about it other than the main like the main stuff, and then you know yeah. some of the things that followed it. Gotcha, um, gotcha. But uh, you know, there's there's a lot of there's plenty of comic books and tie-ins. And, you know, you said Watchmen. Yep, uh, yep. You know, as part of the DC. You know, um, not many people may know this, but I mean. Batman has met the Ninja Turtles. Yep. Yeah. That that happened. Like that that's a thing. Yep. Um. So <laughs> I mean, not really sure where you want to go with that, but it, I mean, then you have other other offshoots and uh, you know storylines and things like that, like uh, Teen Titans. Would yep. Um. You know, or uh, you know the the family of the the. Uh, the Wayne family now uh, that they have, which, uh, you know, they, you've got Damien, you've got, uh, well, actually, I don't even remember who, who all they have. I mean, obviously, Damien Wayne is, is Bruce Wayne's son. He's another yeah. Robin. Uh, you've got, I think, another Fetch me Robin. another Robin. Right, basically. You've got, you know, Damien Wayne, Robin. I think you have another Robin. I believe Nightwing is there, I believe. Red Hood is part of that group, too. Yep. Um. So like you know, there's then you have like I, I believe there was what uh, East or West Coast Justice League at one point. Yeah, um, uh, Justice League International. I mean they, yeah, they had Justice yeah, League. yeah. Um, you know one of the one of the characters I'm actually happy that they they kind of they rebooted and really wor- reworked is Wonder Woman, and obviously she's a mainline character, yeah. but she was she's a character that was obviously very feminine i mean she's still feminine but yeah. you know very stereotypical feminine when she first came out mm-hmm. you know oh her magic whip can make men tell not uh, tell the truth right um, but you know they've really kind of reworked her into a a true superhero like mm-hmm. you know the magic whip thing is pretty badass she you know it's much more than just a whip you know she uses a sword when she fights nowadays yep sword and, she has, sword and shield yep yeah she has you know superman level strength yeah she she's does. she can fly uh you know she has a multi she has powers and you know she's also one of superman's closest friends like they're it's not just that you know they're truly friends well and like the, their friendship in a lot of continuities goes so deep that she and Lois actually start forming a friendship. Mm-hmm. Because Wonder Woman doesn't really have a whole lot of 
girlfriends to, to hang out with. And she's like, you know, like in Themyscira, this is just common every day because it's all women. We all hang, you know, we all do our stuff together. We train together. We fight together. You know, we eat together. We do everything together. But, you know, when she comes to man's world, as she puts it, it's, it's man's world. She doesn't really have any friends. So for her to become friends with Superman shows not only, you know, are they, you know, similar enough that they can form that friendship, but that she trusts him enough to be friends with him. Yeah. But, but I, I was... Look at how they... I, I, was, I was real quick, you were talking that Batman met the Ninja Turtles, which got me thinking. The Turtles have had other crossovers. So Batman has met the Ninja Turtles. The Ninja Turtles have met the Ghostbusters. Does that mean Batman could meet the Ghostbusters? <laughs> In theory. I mean... <laughs> uh... He'd probably wind he, up. He uh, could meet the Transformers having... then by that same logic. Because Batman met the Turtles, Turtles met the Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters met the Transformers. So we need Batman teaming up with Optimus Prime to fight Megatron and Joker. Come full I circle. Be, I, th I think it would probably be more of like Megatron and Lex Luthor. Because I feel you like. You know what? Yeah. Joker's... Yeah. Joker Actually, would yeah. probably. Yeah, the Joker would probably team up with like. Starscream. Star yeah. 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 Probably. Yeah. He he he's too sporadic and mm -hmm. Yeah, he he wouldn't he and Megatron would not would Yeah, not that's true. Well. That's true. So all right, so Batman and Optimus it'd be let's call it how it is. If it's Optimus Prime, it's gonna be Superman with Optimus. I mean, because they that's you know, that's what they do. Uh versus yeah, Megatron and uh Luther, I think would be that'd be an interesting comic. I mean it'd be I mean, it's Superman fighting a robot, so that's going to be a pretty quick fight because we've seen him do that before. So, like, they, like Energ Energon is an exotic form of kryptonite. Oh, there we go. There you go. Yeah, but there's also well, I need to call DC. On. There's like there, that's something else we haven't touched on, right? Because there's other colors of krypton, I believe. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's blue kryptonite. I mean, there's a the classic green, but then there's blue, red, yellow, black kryptonite. Um, I, those are the ones I know of. I mean, they all do weird stuff uh like particularly i think it's blue kryptonite pretty much that has the effect of whatever the hell the writer feels like at the time right <laughs> which i mean you got especially in the golden age of, of superman comics you got some really really interesting outcomes with that um let's see here let's let me look up here yeah uh how many kinds yeah, I mean I, I think one I think it's probably the black kryptonite is basically like insta death to what they they've they've retconned it a little bit, I think, if if I'm thinking of the right thing, that black kryptonite like can also depower them. But okay, black uh, splits a Kryptonian into two separate entities. Gold kryptonite causes permanent power loss for Kryptonians. Uh, although a 2008 issue of Action Comics posited the power loss only lasted 15 seconds, which, eh. Uh, I mean, that's a that's a real that's a real like massive depowering of that kryptonite. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, even even 15 seconds to uh, you've got 15 seconds against a fully depowered kryptonian, you can do a lot of damage to a regular human in 15 seconds. So, if you made a bullet out of golden kryptonite and then shot it, hmm. is it like one of those things where it just it, it does gold kryptonite instantaneously make them lose their powers or is it where it's like they have to be near it for a while kind of like green kryptonite where right. it drains them? Um, I feel like I, I think that it depends on the writer. <laughs> if, I okay. mean, if I'm being honest, so I mean, if you, I mean, if you created a bullet out of gold kryptonite and shot shot a Kryptonian with him, would they just would that just be it? In theory, yeah. Uh, well, let's see. There's also a uh, jewel kryptonite, which amplifies the psychic abilities of Kryptonians trapped in the Phantom Zone. Uh, red kryptonite causes temporary and unpredictable what? physical. Yeah, I know. I, I, really bizarre. That's awfully though. specific. I know, right? Uh, let's see, red causes temporary and unpredictable physical and mental changes in Kryptonians, uh, such as shrinking, growing, sleepwalking, hallucinations, and loss of control of powers. Um, it, is, it, this, it, is this kryptonite or ambient? I mean, like, I'm not really sure. What the, <laughs> this sounds like an ED. This sounds like an ED medication. <laughs> make make a shrinking, growing, sleepwalking, hallucinations, and loss of control of powers. Uh, then you got green kryptonite, which I mean, you know what that does. Uh, white kryptonite kills all plant life, so Swamp Thing hates that one. Uh, and then blue kryptonite causes pain, power loss, and eventual death for Bizarro Superman. Uh, created by the same duplicator ray that created the original Bizarros. Has no effect on regular Kryptonians, though. Ah. 
Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but now I'm gonna I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and ask you a question. Okay. Who's your favorite? Who are your favorite DC villains? Oh man. I gotta think. If I'm gonna narrow it down, I gotta think about this for a second. Yeah, he's got. He's he's pondering, yeah. folks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, each of the each of the main characters in DC. Ha I'm stalling for time here for Tim to <laughs> to be able to figure out what his his favorite villains are. But um, each of the characters, you know, the main heroes in in the DCU obviously have their own uh, own rogues gallery and whatnot. Hmm. We all kind of know Batman's. He's got yep. you know the Riddler, Joker, uh, Bane, Mister Freeze. Hmm. Who's really he wound up becoming more of like a, I don't know, a, I wouldn't say a so much an a villain. Anti-villain? Because he's not really an anti-hero. No, he's not an anti-hero. He's yeah. just more, yeah, like I'd say probably an anti-villain. Yeah. Well, okay, um, okay I, I got some. Um, okay. As far as villains, like you mentioned some names there, and it made me realize that a lot of the villains in DC that I like are people who don't really have powers. Riddler is one of my favorites. Captain Boomerang, m mostly because of the Suicide Squad uh, movie version of him. Um, but I, I seem to like the villains that don't really have powers, that they're just that skilled or that cunning or talented in whatever you know area their, their moniker is, that they can still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with whoever they're up against. I mean, then, yeah. then, then I, I, you know, completely uh, contradicting what I just said, I also like Bane. <laughs> I mean, he is really kind of just, he's kind of an everyman. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously he's strong, yeah, depending he's on the strong. continuity, but but the, the, the Venom makes him much stronger, but he's also yeah. super intelligent. Yeah, super intelligent. I mean, he's a tactician. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he can keep up with Batman and then some. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Like he's he's a yeah, he is a he is a very interesting villain. Um who else you got? You know, you were talking about you know, some of the oh. you said some of your favorites, but you yep. you didn't name I mean, you said Riddler, but you didn't kind of you just said, you know, people that don't have powers. Right. Um I mean, uh, as far as like favorites, I mean, the ones I mentioned obviously. Um Man, who who else? I like a lot of DC's oddball villains. Like, okay. I think I think Calendar Man is is. <laughs> I, I like I like the idea of Calendar Man, just because the amount of of planning that goes into you know his capers and whatnot. I mean, <laughs> I would love to right. be able to sit down with that character and just go why, how fair enough. When? Um, um, uh, Mister Mixaplex. Yes, that that. I love any comic involving, and, and like some people said, it's Mixelplex. Some people said it's Mixapitalic. Mister M, um, we'll just make it simple here. One of my favorite comics featuring him is the Emperor Joker storyline, yes. where originally he's going to give Joker one percent of his power. You know, just to you know, because he's bored with what he can do with Superman. He feels like he's in a rut. You know, their relationship has gotten stale, and he wants to spice it up by bringing Joker into the bedroom. Um. Joker ends up tricking him into giving him 99% of his power. And Joker literally becomes a, you know, reality-bending god, yeah. Um, so, I mean, that one, yeah, I, I, I like, I like uh, Mixopitalic. Um, man, like, well, like a lot of the, the weird characters. Condiment King, I think, is a great joke character. Um, there needs to be... Solomon Grundy want pants, too! Okay, see, I consider him a mainline villain. Um... Solomon Grundy want pants too. Those of you that are old enough to get that joke, we love you. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, I mean, if you look at like the Legion of Doom, I mean, hmm. they have you know a decent amount of of characters, and there's there's some I think more obscure characters that are becoming more mainstream now, especially with movies like The Suicide Squad. You know, King yeah. Shark, Most which, which didn't everybody really... loved King Shark in that movie. Right, I mean, and people really didn't know a lot of. He definitely wasn't mainstream until like the Harley Quinn show came out a yeah. few years ago. What and um, and the Harley, Harley Quinn Coco's version, Harley Quinn. Was, yeah, well, show. that that version of King Shark was was a quite a bit different take than what we had seen uh, prior to that. 
But I think it, it definitely did expose a lot more people to that character. Um, the one other character that show really highlighted, Kite Man. Yeah. I mean, Kite Man was... I mean, he's was, kind of like a... He, he's, he's a throwaway you know, joke. Like a, I mean, well, he, he, he's a reoccurring joke. Well, um, uh, not as reoccurring as you think, actually. I mean, he hasn't had that many comic appearances. And there's, I mean, there, in the show. Well, yeah, well, in the show, he's a reoccurring joke. But yeah, as far as comics, like, Kite Man, the fact that they put him as effectively a secondary character in that show at all instead of a background character was kind of a surprise for a lot of people, but, I mean, he became a fan favorite. Like, admittedly, Kite Man is, like, my favorite character from that show. Yeah. I mean, if you want Hell to yeah. talk about, like... I mean, if you want to talk about a character that's really kind of tragic, look at Harley Quinn, Harleen Quinzel. Yeah. Like, they, they have know, done started. so much with her character over the last several years to really mm-hmm. grow and improve her. I mean, because before, she was always Joker's sidekick. And that's, well, I mean, for the look longest time, that's all, yeah, that's all she was, was Joker's sidekick for years. You know? I mean, she she originated in Batman the Animated Series. Yep. At, like she is one she is one of the few characters that originated in a TV show and then moved to comics. But she was such a popular character, and Arlene Sorkin did such a good job with that character. Right. Like with the the vocalization for that character, like made her enjoyable. Yeah. And you know, just her relationship with Joker is very tragic. Her her backstory is tragic. Um. You know, and she's had so many ups and downs in the yeah. D, in the DC universe, um, and it's just like she's such a, an interesting character nowadays. Oh, absolutely! Like, before yeah. she was kind of like a throwaway type thing, but nowadays, like they've really fleshed her out, and she is one of the strongest, like not physically strongest, but just one of the strongest leading characters. I would say in yeah. the DC universe. Oh, absolutely! She is absolutely a leading character. Yes, I mean she she, she has made that transition from sidekick. The headliner. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and they did, they, for the most part, have done a really good job with it. I mean, they, they have moved her on from being, you know, Joker's buddy because she's realized that that is an incredibly toxic, abusive relationship. And like all the people that go, oh, you know, Harley and Joker, that's, that's relationship goals. Do you read oh, comic? Not. Do you read comics? I mean, because I can't think that I would ever go, I hope today that I'm mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually abused. For somebody else's enjoyment. That's what I want out of today. Yeah, I mean, I mean if you even just want to focus on the physical, Joker yeah. throws her out a window. Like, a Met third multiple story times. window in the cartoon show. Mm-hmm. Like, in the cartoon show. Throws her out a window. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah. That, that's not relationship goals. Sorry, sorry, you know, teenagers that don't know any better. Um... <laughs> We're old. Yeah, exactly. we, we're, we're entitled to say that. Exactly. Um, anyway, yeah, so DC's got some, some... Some of those characters have really transitioned well between both hero and villain and anti-hero roles. You know, the Suicide Squad themselves are one of those, where, you know, they're yeah. kind of forced into that. I mean, right. they're forced into it, but they kind of take to it. Right. You know, you know look at, like, Deadshot, uh, you know. Another one of those characters that I would say he's kind of, I mean, to me anyway, he was not really mainstream. Right. Kind of knew of him, but you didn't really know him. Yeah. I get you. I get you. So, yeah. I mean, there's other, you know, other more obscure characters out there, not necessarily even villains. I mean, look at the, like the Justice League Unlimited. I mean, you had everybody, (laughs) everybody. I mean, (laughs) Zantana is is even not. Or Zatanna, whatever. Zatanna, yep. Zatanna. She's not even all that like mainstream, although she's becoming more. She became has become more popular recently in the mm. the animated movies. Oh, yep. Um, you know, Doom Patrol. Oh, like Doom Patrol. Like I, I, they were one of the DC teams that I didn't really. I had a passing knowledge of, but not really ever got into them until the live action show. And oh my god, I love that show. <laughs> Right, Brendan Fraser, twenty twenty four. Yep, um, <laughs> he he is a delight. Uh, Anybody that besmirches him, get out. <laughs> yes, exactly. Leave now. <laughs> but anyway, no, yeah, yeah. Doom Patrol. Um, uh, I would say Doom Patrol is probably one of the one of those comic book teams that you have to be embedded pretty deep to know who they are. Yeah, like they are not mainstream 
at all. Yeah. Not at all. You know, even people know about like you know Justice League International or you know the the, you know, the West Coast Avengers. Uh, you know the what was the Canadian superhero team? X Force. Uh, Alpha Flight. Al Alpha Flight. That's right. Yep. Uh, Alpha Flight. I mean, they know about them before Doom Patrol. I mean, sadly, but like like Doom Patrol. Just speaking of the show here, they go so like off the wall compared to like any other superhero team, even just in, in DC, that I think that's what makes them unique is they are just so different. And like the characters are so different than anything else in DC. You know? Yeah, I'd say that's a fair I mean that gives them a fair shake. <laughs> but um I was thinking about it earlier, you know, thinking about one of my one of my more favorite villains is uh, Vandal Savage. Okay, okay. Uh, for those of you that don't know Vandal Savage, basically he's an immortal Neanderthal. Yeah. <laughs> or Neanderthal. Sorry. Sorry, I grew up in the era where they were referred to as Neanderthals, not Neanderthals. <laughs> right. Uh, so that's what that's my go-to phrase for them, and then I kind of have to correct myself if I'm feeling like not being... Pluto is a planet. Like... Yes. <laughs> and the sun is a mass of incandescent gas. A gigantic um, nuclear furnace, if you will. Right, where hydrogen is burnt into helium. Oh, at a temperature of billions of degrees. Right. <laughs> um, Thank you, they might be giants. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just say, if you don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, he's an interesting character. Um, like, I like how, at least in, in some of the DC continuities, they tie him into... Like, he was, you know, the evil dictator, evil leader of, of any given, like, war or whatnot. Like, in one, like, he was Genghis Khan. Um, in another, he was, like, several, like, uh, French leaders or, or uh, 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 British kings or whatever have you. And, you know, he dies and then just goes somewhere else because he got bored with it or things didn't pan out the way he wanted to or he did what he accomplished and moved on to something else. I mean, he was always an interesting character. Um... In one of the, the DC, if we're going back to the DC animated stuff, there was one there where they actually killed him, uh, which is really interesting, uh, which, God, I can't remember which animated one it was, but effectively, the Suicide Squad was, was supposed to take somebody out, and they found out that Vandal Savage had a get-out-of-hell card, and I mean that in a literal sense. He had a magic business card. That if you died, you you wouldn't go to hell. You would just come back and be fine. And of course, all the bad guys want that. Because um, like especially with with like Constantine and a lot of the other magical characters, like it's established that hell is a thing in the DC universe. I mean, Lucifer is a DC Comics character, right? Literally, the devil. I mean, granted, it's Mephisto. Um, we're not oh, going to be like every other comics thing here. There is no Mephisto. There will never be Mephisto. Marvel fans, let's just move on. DC already has the devil. Just saying. <laughs> right. But, uh, uh, yeah. Anyway. So, like, like as far as, like, obscure characters, like, I mean, villains, heroes, either one, who's, like, your favorite, like, just obscure character? I gotta make you think, because I know, like, DC, you're more of a mainline kind of guy. Yeah, so that's why it's it's really hard for me. Like, I'd have to probably look and like look through and and really really try to dig to find one okay um, so I, I i'm you may have to give me a you know give me a few minutes gotcha. um well i know you you had mentioned booster gold who i mean is is more well known now because they've been featuring him uh, prominently a lot more um but i mean he started off as just a normal dude from the future who stole tech and had knowledge of things that would happen and came back to the past to prevent those things from happening to make himself a bigger hero. So, I mean, that, that was, you know, an, an interesting take. I mean, but again, he's more of a mainline guy now. Um, but, uh, I mean, if we're talking about, more, like, more obscure characters, I mean, a lot of people, especially from uh, Young Justice nowadays, know who Blue Beetle is, but a lot of them don't know the original Blue... Well, technically the original Blue Beetle, Ted Cord who was, was a scientist. I mean, he was you know, Batman-esque. He made it, all of his tech, you know, he was a, just a smart scientist dude. Um, the, right. new, the new Blue Beetle is, it's an alien cyber biotech scarab thingy. Um, 
I'm not too super familiar with the new Blue Beetle. Um, I like the concept of him. It reminds me a lot of, I'm going to talk anime here for a second, reminds me a lot of Giver, where it's it's an alien bio-weapon that fuses with a human, and that human becomes a hero. I mean, it's very similar takes, but I, that, that's my hot take for tonight, I guess, is uh, Blue Beetle is Giver. <laughs> well, I mean, there you go. I, I mean... Uh, Bat- yeah, what about I, Batmite? Do you like Batmite? Bat Batmite is an an interesting character for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's the Batman version of of Mister Mixapitalik, right? Um, I and mean, they're literally both from the same dimension. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd probably have to say so. I mean, Doom Patrol is obviously one of those the obscure like very, that's probably the deepest that my obscure knowledge goes. Okay, okay. Um, but you know, I'm kind of looking through some some stuff and uh you know i have to give a shot shout out to mad mod okay okay from, from the titans you know they they did feature him on an episode of the the early 2000s tv uh like anime yep. teen titans and i thought he was a really fun a fun villain plus he was he was voiced by um oh uh, crap what's his name uh british actor uh was in um uh, a Clockwork Orange, uh, uh, Andy McDowell. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Was was in you know voiced by him. So he he was just a he was a fun like weird irreverent character. Oh, um, I've I've got one. If we're talking about like weird irreverent characters, Music Meister from Batman: Brave and the Bold, voiced by Neil Patrick and Harris. Oh yes, and also I've... the singing part of him was done by Neil Patrick Harris. Well, yeah. Um, I, like, probably also, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, like, I like Music Meister so much that, uh, on, I don't remember what music service it is, but they have the soundtrack to that episode. I actually have that and listen to it pretty often. <laughs> Fair enough. It's, 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 uh, it's great to hear, uh, Diedrich Bader sing as Batman. I actually got another one. Uh, I, I have two more okay. less... They're they're less known, well known characters, but I think you know they're they're probably better known. Well, the first one, it all caveat characters. Uh, um, two sets here. Okay. Uh, Wonder Twins. Okay. Which okay. you really don't see or know or hear about them at all these days. Well, like, I think they've you, been kind you, of relegated to comic books. You, you see like homages to them, like in, I, I think I think in one of the earlier scenes is the Young Justice. I. I think, it, I think it, was, it was either Young Justice or one of the animated uh, movies. You see two characters that are twins. One of them can turn into elements. The other can turn into animals. But they never call them, you know, Zan and Jace or Jan and Zace or whatever they were. I think it's Jan, Zan and Jace. I know it's a Z and a J. Like I know that. Um, they never call them that, but it's, it's obvious that that's who they are. But Okay, well, what's your second one then? Lobo. How could I forget the main man? Oh, Lobo is a fantastic character. I mean, he's every yes, he pro is. wrestler from the 80s rolled into one just motorcycle riding macho dude uh, yes. who can't be killed, who literally <laughs> yes. killed his whole planet for fun. Yes, he's absolutely insane. Oh, man. Uh, you know, an absolutely insane character. Oh, man, yeah. Very, you know, monochroma- monochromatic goes toe to toe with Superman. Constantly, um, and also helped birth one of the best amalgam characters ever in Lobo the Duck. Lobo the Duck, yes. <laughs> when DC, when DC and Marvel joined forces to make the amalgam comics, they yeah. talked about uh, uh, you know Super Soldier, and we we talked about Dark Claw. Well, there's also Lobo the Duck. Which is oh, Howard man. the Duck used with Lobo, I who basically looked I like an that. evil Donald Duck. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I forgot. Like so, lo- lo- and like Lobo, like any time I see him in anything animated, because I know that there, there was a a live action attempt at Lobo, but you will net Lobo is a character that he has to be animated. Um. 
Just because it's it is so unless he's fully CG, it is so hard to nail down that character live action. Like I mean, yeah. maybe man, if, if if they did like if they gave him his own big Hollywood movie, who would you cast as Lobo? I mean, you got to get somebody that, that can nail that that attitude and be that big. Well, I mean, the Undertaker already looks like him. Well, um, I mean, well, yeah, but I mean, he's he's a little past his prime at this point, sadly. You know, I, I'm trying to think of, like, people right now that could play him, like, just size-wise. Hmm. If we want to try to avoid, like, CGI, right. or, you know, a whole lot of CGI. If you wanted to do, like, a live-action person, who could play him? And I'm having, I'm legitimately having difficulty thinking of someone that is that big and imposing like I would say, maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger, circa the '70s right. and '80s. Well, I mean, was that big? Have you seen um, Hemsworth lately, though, Chris Hemsworth? Yeah, I, well, I just don't he, know that he, he would he, necessarily work. Well, like as far as like the bulk, because he's currently training for the the Hulk Hogan biography, and like he he, there's some social media. Yeah, I know Hemsworth as Hulk Hogan. But there's some picture that he put up on social media the other day, like, completely unrelated to his training. But, I mean, when you're built like that, every picture is going to be showing off some muscle. His arms, like Hulk Hogan in his prime in the 80s, I'm pretty sure Hemsworth's arms are bigger than Hulk's were back in the day. I mean, like, he I mean, looks... I hear he, you, brother. He's more muscular than he was in Thor 1. I mean, in Thor 1, he was, you know, ripped. Beefy. Like, yeah. this is just... Like yeah, his arms are up there, but like, because I, I, he he's got enough of a sense of humor that I think it would be a stretch, but maybe apart from that, like, like the only other like big dude that comes to mind is John Cena, but he's good in the roles that they put him in, but I don't know if he'd be good as Lobo. I mean, he does have a really I, weird sense of humor though, which I appreciate. It's already been. I mean. There, there is one person that I just thought of that comes to mind that could that I feel like could do it. Okay. With with the attitude and the right body shape and whatnot, but it would be really hard to do. Okay. Jason Momoa. Because <laughs> he's already in DC. He's oh my God, Momoa! DC. Like he's got he the he's is, got the he hair. Is... He's got the bulk. He is Lopo. Like he's been, he's been horrible. How is he not? How is he not? Oh my God! You got your Aquaman, but you lost your Lobo. Exactly. Oh my God. <laughs> like that uh, is Jason Momoa. Yeah, it oh really God. is. It's how did we DC? How did you mess up this bad? I mean, Aquaman's great. Don't get me wrong, but Lobo. Yep. Man, Jason Momoa on a space motorcycle going around being a badass. I I would I would watch that. I would watch that in a heartbeat. Yeah, no. I, I would I would concur concur right, with that. So we just have to wait for the Flashpoint film to come out to where everything gets retconned. Jason Momoa is no longer Aquaman. Yeah. Didn't, uh, aren't they Aren't they doing Flashpoint yeah. on the Flash TV show? Well, they they, they did Flashpoint on the Flash TV show. Um, Ezra Miller is reprising his role, and they are doing in, uh, the movie. Like, I don't know if it's called Flashpoint at this point anymore, or it's just the Flash, but it's their interpretation or their, their take on Flashpoint. I know uh, Michael Keaton is, is on set and apparently is going to be Batman. Right. Or at least Bruce Wayne. Um and Momoa is Lobo. That's like freaking perfect right there. Yeah, exactly. Uh yes, yeah, so, I mean th there's there's a lot of kind of forgotten, you know, DC DC characters and things like that and we could probably you know go into a ton of them. Yeah, there's a know? lot of them. But I think that's really the indicative of any uh any universe, right? Like either Marvel or or DC. I mean, yeah. you look at you look at uh, at DC. I mean, Steel, right? 
he's a character that don't not many people know about, and probably for good reason, uh, because of the absolutely terrible Shaq movie yeah. they did in the nineties yeah. that pretty much ruined his popularity. Yeah. Um, I mean, we try not to like think it, of that movie. Right. Uh, he did do some appearances on Superman, the an- Superman, the animated series. And well, I, I mean, think Justice he, League. He, he was pretty crucial. And I think this is pre the steel movie. He was a pretty central figure in the, in the, the death and subsequent rebirth of Superman. Uh, the comics, he was, you know, cause he was one of the, the new Superman that stepped up. To kind of fill that void. I mean, he was a pretty prominent character there, but I mean, apart from that, unless they're doing something where all the the League of Supermen or whatever whatever they go by, uh, the Superman family, will, if you will, unless they're doing like an ensemble cast, Steel doesn't really, to my knowledge, doesn't really do much these days. He's kind of one of those sideline C characters, you know? Right. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think here. I saw, I was looking through a list of comic books or comic book arcs. Um, and if you guys hear some noise in the background, I apologize. My cat is getting ready to fight the dog. Um, cat dog. They, they don't, they don't like each other. <laughs> so. But your dog Stop likes it. everybody. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry about that folks. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, there, yeah, there's a, like a group of, of uh, Superman out there, I just can't seem to find the. Uh... Well, I mean, uh, Superman, Supergirl, Power, uh, Power Girl, Power Woman, whatever she goes by at any given time. Uh, Steel, uh, Super boob Window, Super, yeah. Which okay, they explained why she has a boob window. When she was making the costume, she couldn't decide on a logo, so she kept it open for options and just never got around to it. I that that's yeah. the actual explanation why she has a boob window. Um, let's see. Uh, isn't she also like? Isn't she also? Supergirl from another universe? She she has been Supergirl from another universe, Supergirl from an alternate timeline, a clone of Supergirl, a completely separate character, um, a female clone of Superman, and... I think that's it. I think. At least those are the ones I know of, anyway. <laughs> gotcha. Yep. Well, I mean, there... It, again, w- there are so many villains out there, that, and, and characters are really... I mean, we haven't even touched on some of them, like Darkseid. Yep. Um, who's one of the main one? Doomsday. Yep. Uh, we haven't talked about a lot of Batman's uh, sidekicks. You know, Batgirl, Batwoman, Robin, Nightwing, uh, Red Robin, Black Lightning. You know, uh, Black Lightning. Uh, who is uh, going to be played by The Rock? Correct. Well, no, you're you're thinking of Black Adam. Black Adam. Sorry, yep. my apologies. Yep. Um. Uh, you know. And yes, he uh, is going to be played by The Rock. <laughs> yes. Uh, Green Arrow, somebody that we haven't talked about all that much. Huntress, um, Doctor Fate, uh, who's become you know the red, the orange, fun. the yellow, the green, the blue, the indigo, the violet, the black, and the white lanterns. I mean, we talked about the green ones, <laughs> right? You know the the star sapphires mm-hmm. and you know the, the, the those group. Um, and one of my fav- one of my more favorite villains that I didn't talk about, which was uh, Deathstroke. Yeah. Um, oh, you mean Deadpool? Not snarky Deadpool. <laughs> yes. Serious pool. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, in, in reality, folks, that like that's that was the whole thing with, yeah. with Deathstroke and Deadpool. Is DC created Deathstroke, and Marvel wanted to lampoon him, so yeah. they created Deadpool, which is why his name, uh, Deadpool's name, is Wade Wilson because yeah. Deathstroke's name is Slade Wilson. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fun facts. Well, yes. I mean, and I, I, I'm sure that we we could do a whole episode looking at uh, like Marvel and DC characters and the release time windows between the two and the copycats between the two. But yeah, that's a whole other episode. So and I, I think we're we're almost at time on this one, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so probably should start wrapping it up, folks. But uh, so yes, uh, this is our. Um shout out and our love our, our love showing to to the dc universe um you know again we've given a lot of love out there to marvel um and, and not that much to dc so we thought yeah. we'd change it up a little bit and, and talk about the other side of the house that that completes our lives now granted if we want to talk about the side talk about houses 
Marvel's probably, you know, they've the got mansion. a nicer house. <laughs> yeah, Marvel's probably the mansion, whereas DC's, you know, like the woodshed uh, right oh, now. I mean, it's not that's not that bad. I mean, they at least have a nice condo, maybe a duplex. All right, fine. They're the guest house. They're the nice guest house out next to the pool. <laughs> there we um, go. Marvel is the main house. <laughs> the pool's connected to. That's exactly. <laughs> But you never know. Maybe Marvel or maybe DC will find a way to turn around their cinematic universe and yeah. really kind of hit a few home runs. And that's really all that my commentary was there, folks. I'm not knocking the DC universe at all. I'm just simply stating that as far as like popularity and powerhouse and just good films goes, Marvel is far out and above DC. Because as Tim said, I mean, there's only like three really good DC Cinematic Universe Sadly. movies right now. And so, Green Lantern is not one of them! Yeah, I don't even think they actually count DC, uh, Green Lantern as part of their I, cinematic universe. No, I, think I, it's, I, think it's, I think it's I think it's literally just an offshoot that they're going to forever well, carry. Well, I mean, according to the Snyder Cut, Green Lanterns are canon to their cinematic universe, but... Yeah, well... It is what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, on that bombshell, uh, we'll <laughs> go ahead and wrap up for the night. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us again for another episode of non Secretary Nerds. As always, you can find us uh, hosted on Anchor.fm, site who also feeds out to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and about five or six different others that I can never remember. Never uh, can. Go there. You can sign up. You can listen directly on those on those sites. You can sign up for our RSS feeds uh, and get notifications when new episodes come out. You can also find the recordings uh, of this on YouTube at our channel, Non Sequitur Nerds. And you can also catch us potentially live on Twitch if we remember to hit the button. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Ian. <laughs> if we remember to hit the button, uh, twitch.tv slash Non Sequitur Nerds, I yep. think that's our handle. Yep. Um, and Facebook and Twitter are, again, our uh, our main uh, mainline uh, social media presences, so... Uh, again, we thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so I think that's going to be about it for tonight. I think so. So, you know, thank you again. And uh, I hope you guys survived, uh, you know, your darkest days and your blackest nights or whatever that sing song is. You're, uh, you're I can't close. Remember it. You're close. Uh, I'm close. Anyway, <laughs> well, <laughs> have a have a good night, folks. Bye, everybody.